Hi everyone, this is Tom Raftery of Green Monk TV doing an interview for JDOD and with me I have Scott Bollock from SAP. Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks Tom. Um, my name is Scott Bollock, as you said, and I am responsible for SAP sustainability solutions and those solutions are across uh, four different areas and hopefully we can chat a little bit about those now. Sure. So, Scott, sustainability, it's uh, it, the, the, the whole interest in sustainability is wearing off, isn't it? Nobody's really into sustainability these days, am I right? Well, I think you're wrong. I think there's a, a caveat. I think one of the things that we've seen in the market, which I think is actually a good sign, is that sustainability was a topic du jour uh, in 2008, 2009. It's still there. You still see more and more CSOs coming online. But what you're seeing is instead of a centralization of power within those chief sustainability officers, what you're actually seeing is the sustainability officer setting the strategy for the company. And then whenever you look at the actual execution, uh, when we look at where people are actually purchasing IT, that really is coming down into the LOB. So it's R&D for sustainable products. It is the supply chain when you look at sustainable supply chain. It's manufacturing whenever you look at sustainable operations. So I think to say that it's uh, not there is wrong. I think it's there, it's stronger than ever. I think what people are discovering is it's sedimenting back into the underlying businesses uh, and that's where it should be fun fundamentally. Okay, but I mean, with the current state of the economy, are, are people really willing to get their, you know, stick their hand in their pocket and spend money on sustainability solutions? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you take a look at why people buy for sustainability, I think there's three reasons people buy. First and foremost is compliance. And there are increasing regulations around the globe, whether it be for product or whether it be not just for, uh, whether it be safety and showing that you are increasing the safety within your operations. And so one, of course, whenever you take a look at that and you look at the complexity of businesses spread out on global operations, they need solutions uh, that are IT solutions to be able to adhere to those com regulations in a, in, a, in a timely and in a low cost manner. A second, you continue to see people interested in those solutions that help them save money. Uh, energy management obviously being top of mind. And third, there are those companies that are spending on aspirational, really trying to understand what is the product footprint of the products that they sell into the market and how they can lower that footprint, whether it be carbon or whether it be other, other uh, substances. And where are you seeing most of the, the traction these days? What's the most, what's the area of the largest, uh, well, either spend or interest for, for SAB at the moment? I think if you take a look at some areas that are really hitting uh, for SAP, uh, one of the areas is operational risk management. And if you go back and you just look at the last couple of years, what you see are these big events, uh, that these events happen, and then there's a tremendous impact on the brand reputation. There's a tremendous impact on the financial valuation of those companies. And so what you're seeing is companies on a trend. Uh, the first trend on operational risk was really about compliance. Am I compliant to regulations? Now you're seeing people increasingly looking at proactive prevention. How do I actually go out and report incidents before they happen? How do they then analyze those incidents, put them in a risk framework, and then how do I actually execute management of change? So we're definitely seeing a tremendous amount of interest uh, from across multiple industries. And uh, finally, what we're beginning to see is some really interesting stuff where people are looking at the tremendous amount of data they have and trying to figure out how they can correlate that data and actually get into predictive analytics around risk. So that's one of the areas we're definitely seeing. Okay, and when you talk about data, I mean, a lot of uh, the various solutions have uh, massive amounts of data associated with them. Uh, how is SAP going to handle that, the, the, the big data issue? I think one of the things that we're fortunate is that unlike uh, some players in the market, we within SAP have strong technology, both for analytics and then when you look at big data, obviously we have HANA. So some of the things that we're doing is working with customers and determining how we can leverage HANA to push them over limits that they might otherwise have. Limits in terms of their own operations and limits in terms of processes. One of the ones I love is we have an embedded product compliance customer who is now looking at putting embedded product compliance on top of HANA. So this company has 100,000 different uh, recipes. They produce three to 4,000 documents a day. And obviously that's on the back end, but on the front end they've got to really make sure during the design process that they understand whether or not the, the substances, whether or not the ingredients are going to be compliant to regulations. One of the things they're doing is by putting it on HANA is they can get the check back in a second 
rather than getting a check back in terms of minutes or hours. And obviously, if you're in R&D, the last thing you want to do is you're designing uh, is to sit in front of the computer and wait to determine whether or not it's compliant with regulations. And obviously, those regulations are regulations that are country specific. Sure. So, sustainability is here to stay. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Scott, thanks a million.